Hello and welcome to another round of Trails into Reverie. And I tell you something, the game just got a lot better. So how do we reach that wonderful moment? Lloyd and his small group is making its way to the Moon Temple and then they get caught by some EDF troop. They're not even phased! There's only five of them, don't be intimidated! You might want to do a recount, buddy. Bracer's doing here! Estelle! Joshua! How did you know we were here? <laughs> Sorry we're late. Oh yes, late. There were a few things we had to take care of first. And we didn't come alone. Prepared as always. Chief! Dudley! Just how many reinforcements did you bring? That's a cell Joshua for you. Yo, hope we didn't keep you waiting. Commence the assault! Open a path for our allies! Yes, yes sir! Don't sweat running out of bullets. Plenty more where that came from. Dudley really has friends in high places. Ashley's practically a one-woman army. She's all the backup he needed to bring. Now's our chance, Lloyd. Aim for the joints and it'll be down in no time. Understood. Let's do this! So I mainly wanted to talk about the Verie Corridors and its facilities. We are here in the main hub. This is the garden. The word garden for the main hub is a reference to Trails in the Sky 3, there it was also called the garden. In the middle of this we have the very core, which is the AI. The main core gives us the possibility to trade our charts to fill for various things. We can get more bravery points or get another slot of the assault gauge. And various other things, we can have more mini missions and get more tag along slots, unlock mini games like Pom Pom Party or just trade for some special items. We can get these shards from the missions which are achievements most of the time. Here we have a mini mission too, clear 5 mini missions and claim due rewards. We done that and for that we get Phantasmal Shards 60 and yet another nice augment. The mini missions are random. You can get new ones when you reset the dungeon. In this case we have the mini mission break states with Estelle. Have Estelle introduce a break state four times. We did that and we can now get those shards. We can have a conversation with various people in the Rui corridors. They're all standing around and mingled. From special encounters in the Reverie Corridors, you can get the Ceiling Stones. Blue Ceiling Stones give you new stories, Red Ceiling Stones give you new minigames, and the Silver Ceiling Stones will give you various items, like new augments, costumes, and other things. There could be a Gold Ceiling Stone, and that would give you a new character only usable here in the Reverie Corridors. 
There is a station where you can buy new augments and upgrade them. And here we have the same thing with very special armor and weapons and well the other equipment stuff. Slab of reminiscence activated. With the blue ceiling stones we get these stories. They are a copy of the mechanic from Trails in the Sky Part 3 where we had moon doors. This is basically the same thing. Connecting to Reverie Garden database. The red stones give us mini games, which is in the end a copy of the mechanic with the star doors from Trails in the Sky 3, yet again. Final thing is this door where we can have some special challenges when we find the key for the door, and these special challenges will lead to upgrading some of our S crafts. This huge tree in the middle can be used for healing. While we have a limited amount of characters in our group in the outside world and that is getting mixed up every now and then, here yeah, we have the whole gang. And we can choose who we want to take with us and who is not. All the great characters are here. Ah, and win. Since we're talking about the technical side here, let's talk about how much of an impact your equipment and your augment have on your character at this point. I don't really get much extra health or attack or anything when I level up. But I can get more than 10% from an item when it comes to ATS, DEF, ADF or strength. It's impressive. And we haven't even talked about health. If my character has base health from 15,000, the item with the most hit points on them was one with 12,000. Which is kind of insane if you think about it. Then we can add the health from augments and just an HP3 gives us 4,800. Various other augments give us extra health too. This can lead up to 9,600 for material ultra rare all in all, the games have developed in that direction. The items have been more complex. For example, at some point you could get a holy chain. That would prevent you from death blows. And that's all it did. Then the holy chain could have a better version of it in form of the holy sphere. The holy sphere also gave you some hit points. In Reverie, the holy sphere gives you hit points points, extra EP and extra evasion. And it's not the final form. You can upgrade it to a holy symbol, which gives you even more of the above mentioned. It's hilarious. When I played Trails in the Sky back then, I was very happy to have a grey locket. Now you can fuse more grey lockets together and get a grey locket that gives you extra hit points. It's extremely interesting how much this developed. The augments are the same thing. You can now fuse them together and get a better version. You can get your normal tier gem or you can get a tier gem in rare. That tier gem has then extra health on it. And of course it doesn't end there. Personally I think it's overdoing it a little. It's still compensating for the change of the art system that started with cold steel. You know, before cold steel a certain amount of points for each color were needed in a line to get a spell. Sometimes you needed a combination of some colors and sometimes you just needed extremely high value in one color to get the spell you wanted. So, in the past, having one long line was a good thing. Now, it just makes the upgrade of the slots okay. more expensive. The game is a lot more based on the items you have and a lot less on the characters you use. Some of the characters don't even get an upgrade to further crafts. And I get it, this is a game with a gazillion characters at this point. Which leads me to another thing I wanted to talk about. Trails into Reverie might be a perfect starting game if you want to get into the series but are afraid of playing 9 games before you can even start with this one. Almost every character is here. A few characters here are missing. I haven't seen Kevin or Reese in these games so far and 
Falcom is hiding them more than other characters at this point. Then we didn't see Cassius and of course Chloe hasn't shown up. But then again we are not at the end of the game. We might even get to see some of them. Not that I need more playable characters. I'm at this point at around 44. We got Olivier out of the last golden ceiling stone. Added to him was Sherazade, who is still not playable. I don't understand this. The first full group of characters was Estelle, Joshua, Sherazade and Olivier. And we can't recreate that because somebody said, oh yeah, we have her in the game and she is running around as a character. But she's like Kia, she can't fight because the Silver Streak and A-Rank Bracer can't fight. I'm not able to understand the thought process here. Anyway, the characters that are not able to join this game in the normal story will be presented with the Mundo mechanics, we will have flashbacks of them. So I'll predict, I will see Cassius Bright, Chloe and maybe even Zinn and all the others who didn't make it in this game on the regular base by adding them to the storyline in these flashback scenes. So yeah, this could be seen as Trails 2.0, a reintroduction into the franchise for everyone who wants to start with this. But doesn't have the time to play all the other games. And with that I will take a little break from doing these videos. I will have a final video where I talk about the game as a whole and place it in the ranking I have already made for these games. And until then, bye bye. Piece of cake.